Okay, so we've added in the flow lines into this whole calculation. Here we have them going in this end port. We've got a model that's just little tubes. So the air velocity going through there, it's oxygen, and we've got that modeled at or coming in at uh, a flow rate of 40 liters per minute, which is about the average that human respiration would be. So we're, we're trying to model this so that it'll go in a, a breathing system, a rebreather system for diving use. The first step is to model it at the surface and then we'll model it at depth. But let's see if we've got a problem just on the surface to start with. Is there a hot spot? Is there an area the flow is not moving like it should where we should actually improve it? So here we're tracking the airflow through and it's a little hard to see because we've got this ISO surface in there. But we're going to get rid of that in just a minute or we're going to hide that. What we see is the airflow is coming in. I've just got a little box that this thing is, the airflow is going into. So it circulates in the box and then it's got to come back out. So it goes in through here and then we'll rotate it around. And it goes out around the corner here. So we said that we've got a little bit of a hot spot. And lo and behold, when we look at what's going on inside here, we've got a curl right there. So what this this analysis is doing, we would never have been able to see that just purely looking at the, 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 the design of the part. We'd say, yeah, it looks nice, it looks nice, it looks like it should flow properly. But until we actually run the computational fluid dynamics anal uh, analysis program on it, we really don't know. So we do the simulation here for the strength, we do the simulation over here for the flow. To have a properly engineered system, you have to look at a broad scope of problems. So let's hide this ISO surface so we can see these flow lines just a little bit better. So we're going to hide those. Make sure we can find those here. Uh, so sorry for the delay. Toggle the visibility. Here we see we're looking straight down on the top. So, in other words, if we're looking at this part, we'd be looking straight down here on the inside. We're looking straight down. So the gas is coming in, swirling around, coming out, and it's coming back out the other way. We're looking at just the velocity magnitude, and we see our highest velocities are right around that same area where we had that that hot spot in terms of the turbulence. The ideal is to have basically a smooth flow, which means that you don't have any areas where the gas speed has to speed up dramatically, unless that's what you're trying to shoot for. In this, we're trying to make its flow as smooth as possible, so we're trying to make sure that we don't have any hot spots. In other words, the flow doesn't get kinked and it doesn't get uh, sped up really fast, because if in a breathing system, if you have areas like that, at depth, where the gas gets thicker and heavier and gets compressed, you'll have a hard time breathing. So this is showing me that even though this part looks good from a mechanical standpoint, before we go to manufacturing, we definitely want to redesign to make sure that we can minimize any of these adverse flow effects. And this is the reason why it pays to have sophisticated software on both these arenas. Just drawing pretty parts is not the name of the game. That's not proper engineering. The form must follow function. So with this, we can tell that the function is not proper, so we have to change the form. My name is David Weber. Contact me at Gray Wolf, Gray Wolf Innovations Incorporated, www.graywolfinnovations.com. be glad to talk to you about it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.